got some shit on him here. All right, let's, let's see what's happening here. All right, everybody come on in. We're here. I am broadcasting live right now, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all come on up in here. Let this thing hit. And once it hit live, we're going to be good to go. All right. What's happening with it, guys? And we're doing a special broadcast for the week. You know, it's Thursday night. About to get paid. Stimulus check. Party's jumping. Wave your neck. Moving, shaking. All around. <laughs> What's going on with y'all, man? How y'all doing, man? Hope y'all are having a great week so far, ladies and gentlemen. Let me let the gram know that I'm live right now. Hope you guys are having a safe week on your quarantine and everything like that. Oh, let me let this Graham know that I'm doing what I'm doing. All right, man. How y'all doing, man? Y'all come on in the room, man. So y'all got your notification for once. Did you get your notification that I'm live right now? Did you get your notification? What's going on, man? Everybody, while you come on in here, hit that thumbs up button. No, I didn't get a check, unfortunately. I say unfortunately, because if I get the check, I would use that check to just, you know, help more people. You know, I, I deserve, just like every other black person, everything. You dig? So I, even though I don't qualify for the check, I still want it, because I deserve it. As a foundational black American, every dime I should get for my lineage building the wealth of this nation, I deserve a damn check. That's the, the least amount. But I digress. Uh, yes, everybody come on in the room. Everybody hit that thumbs up button. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that like button. Hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you've been unsubscribed. Let me scratch my back a little bit. Y'all so got to bear with me. My shirt is a little wet and I wash my face and, you know, a whole bunch of shit going on. Uh, they said if you make a certain amount, you know, if you make a certain amount, you ain't getting it. So I make a certain amount, so I'm not getting it. You know, uh, I don't need it. Yes, I do because I can do good with that. I can do some great things. I can use that to to help other folks. You dig? I can I can use that to help other people. Shout out to Atlanta in the house. And by the way, Atlanta, we still plan on having the Foundation of Black American Conference in June. Um, you know, I think the stay at home order will definitely be lifted by then, and people are going to be so excited to get out the house. He said, I'm looking good tonight, Black Cherry. I feel good, Black Cherry. And Black Cherry, I hope that you are a dude with a name like Black Cherry you don't know. Black Cherry could be Andrew Gillum's screen name. So I, I'm, I'm taking that compliment with the assumption that you are a woman. So I'll take that. Um, but like I said, we do plan on still having the Foundation of Black American Conference. It, if they have that lift they lift the order by then, which I think they will. The, the event is going to be phenomenal. People are going to be so ready to get out the house. I know it's going to be a, a great event, and I'm very excited um, to have it. Um, you are a woman. Okay, there you go, Black Cherry. So I'll take that compliment. I'll take that compliment. I'll take that. Shout out to all my people in Illinois. Shout out to all my Illinois people. A lot of stuff going on out there in Illinois. We're going to touch on some things tonight. Um, in um, Chicago, Illinois, out there at a correctional facility. Let me see if I can find this video, by the way. I should have had it. Those of us who can stay home. I don't want all that now. I don't want all that. Okay. Um, hold on one second. Y'all bear with me. Let me see if I can find some. Let me turn this down. Okay, shout out to everybody hitting the cash app. Shout out to you guys for hitting the cash app at King Flex 818 dollar sign King Flex 818. Um, where's that video? I want to see that clip um, over there. I mean, there are riots in prisons around the country, by the way, guys. There are a lot of riots in prisons around the country. Um, in jail. No, hold on. Now I can't find it. 
Okay. Yeah, let me, okay, I think this is it right here. Up there in Chicago, nigga, they got busy on some guards up there. Okay, yeah, let me show y'all some of this. Hold on. Yeah, man, they caught some guards slipping because, you know, the um, corona, the coronavirus, they said, you know, is running rampant through some of these jails and they're not doing anything about it. And they are letting a lot of brothers and sisters die in these jails. So certain people are like, fuck it, we ain't got nothing to lose. But this is up in, um, in Illinois. You can't hear anything. You can't, there's no audio here. It's just the video. So this is, um, I mean, I don't know why my thing blinks like this. But there's this guard here. Okay, I don't know why this thing blinks like this. Where are my computer guys? Maybe y'all can help me with this. I don't know why this thing blinks like this. Hold on, let me let me go up some. So there's a brother talking to a guard up there. He goes down. Hold on, I'm trying to fast forward it. So he's up there with the guard. Bam, he starts choking the guard. He's jumping on the guard. They drag him, they drag that guard inside, but they putting work in on that guard. So they drag him in and give him that work. They knocked a couple of guards out. And let me let me fast forward it. Another guard run up there. Yeah, they, they up there getting busy. Hold on, hold on. This is what people are desperate. There's another guard running up there, as you can see. Another guard runs up there to the rescue, and then another guard, there's three guards come through. Um, let me see. They get into, bam, knock that guard out, knock them out cold. These brothers are not playing up in there, man. People are desperate. People are like, hell, if they're going to try to liquidate us up in here, we might as well go for broke. Okay. So I, I'm just showing y'all to show you what the game is up there, man. And people are desperate. People are desperate, man. You know. People are desperate right now. So people in these prisons putting in some work. Well, they knock them guards out back to back and start beating them with pillowcases full of soap. You dig? So they were putting in some work, man. And, you know, people are tired of this vile, systematic, violent racism. People, you know, you corner people, they fight back. You know, you corner people, they fight back. You're putting people in these jails and you're not helping them and there's a deadly disease running rampant and you're not really doing anything to secure the safety and the health of the people. So people, you have a God-given right to do whatever you need to do to survive. And unfortunately, it's gotten to this point where people are just desperate. People are desperate and and, and you know, with this pandemic now, again, they're trying to racialize everything. Um, they're trying to maintain the white supremacist order. There's a company up in Chicago, Omar Medical Supplies, and I talked about this on my Instagram, Omar Medi Medical Supplies. And in Chicago, you know, we've been hearing stories about how the coronavirus is disproportionately targeting black people, it's targeting the, the correctional facilities, and they're short on medical supplies they're short on masks and gloves. And listen, there's a company out there. There's a black owned company out there in Illinois. And what the hell is on my thing? Hold on guys. Yeah, there's a black owned company out there in Illinois. And it, it was founded by the legendary the legendary Dr. Willie Wilson. He was a philanthropist out there in Chicago. And this brother has a medical supply company, Oh My Medical Supply. Y'all look that up. Y'all Google that. It's Black-owned medical supply company. So this brother, he's right there in Illinois. This brother has masks, medical gloves. He has everything. He has like just stocked up, fully stocked up. There's a shortage in my monitor. That's why it's blinking. Okay, I need my computer people to hit me. This is a brand new computer, by the way. Your Dr. Willie Wilson is the truth, man. Very, very well-respected brother out there. So instead of them getting those medical supplies right there from that brother, he ran for mayor. Did he run for mayor recently? Because I know he ran for mayor 
Was it recently? Please don't tell me y'all elected that piece of filth, Lori Lightfoot over that brother. Please tell me y'all didn't do that in Chicago. But as I'm saying, this brother has a medical facility with everything they need. The city can buy directly from him. They will not buy from this brother. They will not buy from this brother. In fact, the, the state, they're getting their medical supplies from China. And from what I understand, they spent millions of dollars bringing in this damn, these masks and gloves from China, and the shit was faulty. They brought the shit over, and it was faulty. These people will risk your lives before they get down and do legitimate business, real business with a brother who has top of the line medical supplies right there in the city. You dig? This is why I don't let people run this, we all need to do better, pull yourself up by your bootstrap shit because when we do that, these white supremacists go out of their way to sabotage. And family, why in the hell did y'all vote for Beetlejuice over Dr. Willie? Chicago, talk to me. Talk to me, people of Chicago. Why, what, what, what's going on? What's going on? Dr. Willie Wilson, very respected, brother. This brother's done so much for the people of Chicago. This brother's been a philanthropist for years. What 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 happened? Why would y'all elect her? I'm talk to me, man. What, what's going on? What's going on? Y'all didn't vote for her? Okay, it must have been the white people in the suburbs or something that voted for Lightfoot. Something, something. People didn't take Willie Wilson seriously. Okay. And I know Lightfoot, she had the backing of the governor and his family. The governor out there in, in Illinois, he's sitting on big money. His his family got big money. His sister's a tranny. Well, his, his brother, I'll say that his brother is a woman now. Did y'all know that? The governor out there, in Illinois, his family is like sitting on real big money. His family is sitting on big money and his brother is now a trans woman, whatever the fuck they want to call it. But it's a dude who's a chick now. So they, they, they got this rich family promoting this transhumanism nonsense. So, of course, they're going to put a lot of money behind um, Lori Beetlejuice Lightfoot. And this is what we're going to talk about, family. See, we got to watch it. Family, we got to be careful of these goddamn Trojan horses out here. We got to be careful of these Trojan horses. Everybody hit the like button while I'm talking. He's clicked up with Obama. Lori Lightfoot was a Trojan horse. That woman is horrible for the city of Chicago. This woman is caping for everybody except the foundation of black Americans in that city. That woman is nothing but a Trojan horse puppet for the white supremacists with their bullshit agendas. I, I, I don't know if any black folks who voted for this woman, I don't know what the deal is, but we have to be weary of them running around talking about the first black person this, the first black person that. Yes, they own the Hyatt Hotels, that's true. Family... When they start talking about the first black woman, the first black man, the first black lesbian, when they start emphasizing somebody's blackness, that's a red flag right there, just like with Obama. See, we got to learn from all the mistakes we made with Obama. When they get somebody and the first thing they keep talking about, this is the first black, the first black, the first black president, first black mayor, the first black female mayor, the first black lesbian mayor. When they start bringing up a person's blackness over and over again when white people are doing this and talking that black girl magic bullshit, that's a red flag right there. That is a red flag. So what you have to ask, okay, if this person is so blackity black, 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 and you keep bringing up their blackness, what have they done for black people? And what are they going to do for black people? Oh, well, let's not make it about race. Well, why the fuck are you bringing up their blackness then? Why are you bringing up, if it ain't about race and if they can't do nothing for black people, what the fuck are you bringing up their blackness for? We have to call that out. See, we're not going to live vicariously through niggas no more. 
See, they've been playing on our emotions with that bullshit. We'll put a black face up there and let y'all live vicariously through them. We're not playing that game no more. In fact, when we see them prop up niggas just randomly, antennas go up. Lori Lightfoot is horrible for the city of Chicago. And when they start talking about this minority, Alexandra Cortez Acosta, whatever her name is, she's horrible for black folks. This woman is not a friend of black people at all. She has no camaraderie with us. So when they parade somebody around talking about their minority, that's a red flag. None of that matters. What are we as foundational black Americans going to get? Don't just parade people up here and talk about how black they are and how much a minority they are. What are we going to get? That's all we need to ask. We're not living vicariously through nobody. And when they start talking that black girl magic family, we have to watch out. Remember, when they start pushing these Negroes out here, when white people are backing them a little bit too heavy and we ain't ever heard nothing about these folks, that's a red flag. That means these people have been coon vetted. White supremacists, they pick certain Negroes for a reason. It ain't because of how thorough they are as far as business or science or whatever. White supremacists, they pick niggas based on the Negroes' anti-black sentiments. So when they say, we're going to put a, a black person on the Supreme Court, who are they going to get? Clarence the Coon Thomas. So there you got your black person. So you can't say nothing. Hey, you wanted a minority. You wanted a black person. Well, we got one. So y'all can't complain, now can you? Now we got the biggest, most anti-black coon you can find, but hey, you can't complain, now can you? See, that's the game they've been running on us, even with Obama. Y'all wanted somebody black, we got you, a, hey, a black president, the highest office in the land, you can't complain, y'all voted for him. Hey, you voted for him, he black, you voted. He didn't do shit for you, but you voted for him. So when they start parading Negroes around, remember, they've been coon vetted. They picked them for a reason. They picked Obama for a reason. They knew that Obama was, number one, not a foundational black American. Number two, that Obama came from two different cultures that had nothing to do with our struggle. Obama don't identify with us whatsoever. His dad is Kenyan. He grew up in a white family. He had zero connections to foundational black Americans his whole life. So it was nothing for him to neglect us. You see, they look for niggas like that. And I, I've talked about this before. They look for LGBT Negroes. They look for people who's more likely to turn their back on black society. An immigrant or somebody from an immigrant family. Somebody from a biracial background who didn't grow up around foundational black Americans. They get an LGBT Negro who want to use their sexuality as their get out of black free card. Or they get a bed wench or bed buck. So they look for this. And they cultivate these coons. Just like that Surgeon General talking about, let's do it for your abuela. Let's do it for your big mama. Let's do it for your pop pop. Now, this is a big old ass bed buck with the whitest, most mayonnaise ass wife you can imagine. They know that. They know. They know certain niggas got these bed buck tendencies early on. So they cultivate that. We don't know nothing about these niggas. But they be bringing these little coon niggas in their circles and cultivating them. You understand? They'll get Andrew Gillum. They knew Andrew Gillum had a hankering for bussy. They've been known that. So they done got him and cultivated him. Say, look, look, we'll get you a little beard. You know, so people ain't really all up in your business. But they they knew what his get down was and they cultivated him. He kind of, you know, got caught up down there in Miami. That shit went left on him. But they know, family. They know. And the other day, I was talking about this other Trojan horse. I was talking about that, that sister quote-unquote, Kismikia Corbett, who they were running around talking about Kismikia Corbett is coming up with a vaccine for the COVID-19. All black girl magic. 
they were talking all that black girl magic bullshit. Right there was a red flag. That was a red flag. The fact that they kept pumping her up and then trying to use that whole black girl magic con game. Man, what are y'all talking about? What are y'all talking about? And they kept emphasizing her blackness. A black woman, see, black woman taking charge. A black woman is taking charge of the COVID. Black woman running thing. When they start talking that, that's a con game. That's a con game, guys. Yeah? And now look, look at some of these headlines. See, right there, this is a red flag right here. When I saw these headlines here with Kismikia working on a coronavirus, Kismikia Corbett is not your average scientist. Madam Noir, a black woman leads the fight to a coronavirus. Black Enterprise, Kazmikia Scott was formulating success as a black woman in science. Meet four black science. I mean, they're just going on and on about her blackness. Black woman, immu, Im, what's that? Immunologist leads charge to develop COVID. From the hospital to the lab, black scientists, this is on Forbes. Let me, let me bring this up. This is on Forbes. Black scientists are fighting COVID. This is on Forbes now. A black woman, here you go, on Louisiana Weekly, a black woman is leading the charge. So this, when they're sitting up here talking about how black somebody is, this is a con, guys. This is them not trying, they ain't giving us props. This, they're not doing this to give us props. Okay? When they do all this and it's from like all these little boule websites, I think she might be a foundational black American. But all these little boule sites are really playing up the, the black woman, black girl magic, meet the black sign. I mean, all this black, 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 black shit. That's a red flag. I'm telling y'all. Every time y'all see that, that's a red flag. That's a red flag. Black folks, we don't, we ain't got to black it up like that. So, again, I talked about her the other night and I said, look, they... She just came up with a, a, a new Twitter account a couple of months ago. So I'm like, why did they scrub her old account? Why did they scrub her old account? And this week, I'm like, well, they're hiding something about this woman. So I've been doing some research. Then I figured out why they're, why they're hiding this woman's old tweets. I didn't stumbled upon, if you follow me on Twitter, I stumbled upon her old deleted account, guys. I stumbled upon her old deleted Twitter account. They deleted her old Twitter account because she's 34 years old. And I'm like, wait a minute, ain't no 34-year-old year old sister just going to have a Twitter account made January of this year. That's That don't make sense. So what are they hiding? And then when you try to do research about her, you can't find nothing on her background. And now CNN and all these people, they're doing a bunch of stories on her because now they're trying to create a new background for her right now. They're running, you see all these articles that came out, just came out in the last couple of weeks. So they're trying to create a new image of this woman. But oh, why did they take away the old shit though? Oh, let's get into it. Oh, let all y'all, y'all want to know what the real Kismikia? Do y'all want to know the real Kismikia? <laughs> Oh boy, man, let's let's get into this. Let's get into this. All right, let's let's break this down, guys. Boy, I did some digging. Now, first of all, let's let's make something clear. Let's get the receipts going. And I hate this blinking here. Now, this is her. This is a. This is from her old account. This is from 2015. See, they deleted. Her old account. Her old account was beautifully black. That's her old account on Twitter. That's completely deleted, okay? They deleted that account. The thing is, other people retweeted her when she had her account up, okay? So even though you can delete your account, you can't delete the retweets that people make to your account, okay? So even though her account no longer exists, some of her retweets exist because some of the people who retweeted her, their accounts are still up, okay? So I'm just showing you here, she's beautifully black. That's her name, okay? Now let's look at some of her tweets when she had them up. 
I like my white boys to look like they can surf and got the daddy stroke. It's a rare find when you do, but honey, okay? So, boy, this woman has a bed wench fantasy. This woman is on Twitter. She was on Twitter, damn near begging white men to get with her ass. You, you dig? Hold on. This woman was damn near begging white men to get at her ass. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, there's just so much going on here. Hold on. Let me let me show some more. Okay, let's show some more. Hold on. I hope my kids have white friends. No offense, but most of you niggas and nigga bitches have the worst friendship circle. This is her. Referring to black people as niggas and nigga bitches. Oh. Mm. Family, this woman has such a low opinion of other black people. It's ridiculous. This woman has such a low opinion of other black people. This is absolutely ridiculous. And by the way, she's hopped into the mention. She hasn't denied none of this stuff. She hasn't denied any of this, by the way. She's kind of low-key trying to lightweight deflect troll. The family, this ain't it. This is it's so much more. This woman has vitriol towards black society. Hold on. If I probably end up marrying a white boy with a soulful voice. I mean, so she's one of these people that sits up just begging white men to get at her ass. It, it's, it's, it's real sad and desperate, man. Whoops, what am I doing here? It's real sad and desperate, guys. And, oh, let me show you something. This is another tweet. This is another one. And they do be, she's talking about black men, and they do be having white baby mamas who don't come with all the antics like coon baby mamas. Damn. So she's referring to other black women as coons. Okay? So it ain't just black men she got a problem with. She don't like black men or black women. This woman got a problem with black men and black women. You dig? So it's, it's, it's heavy here. Hold, hold on. Oh my God. Uh, and this is the person, family. This is the person who's supposed to be coming up with a vaccine who's supposed to give us some damn vaccines. This is the person who's supposed to give us some vaccines. Hold on one second. Because I'm looking for some other stuff here. Hold on. And. Y'all bear with me for one second because there's so much stuff here. Hold on. And this is her new account, by the way. Let me show you something on her, her recent account because she's still talking a little greasy. Um, she made some little slick comments about Dr. Sebi. This is her new account. She's like, yeah, any I'm not arguing with anybody over the following. Turmeric, vitamin C, black seed oil, Dr. Sebi, holy water. So she's disrespecting Dr. Sebi. This is on her new account. Listen, this is my DM looks like. This is what my DM looked like after I criticized Dr. Sebi and his lies. Okay. So this woman is, you know, disrespectful on a whole different level, guys. Yeah, this woman is on some other shit. This woman is really on some other shit, guys. Let me pull up some more of her her old tweets. Let me pull up some more of her old tweets, guys. Hold on one second. Let me let me pull up some of her old joints. Oh, so let me pull up some more of her zaddy worshiping tweets. I mean, she's I mean the the zaddy worshiping is just real cringy. It's a lot of these zaddy. Here's some more. Daniel Hargrave from high school can still be my hubby with his sexy white ass. Yummy. So she's begging white dudes, sending out little codes for white men to get at her. 
white boys fucking love me. This is her. They retweeted her. I want that motherfucking white boy. Okay. So this Z begging for Zaddy. She's just begging for Zaddy like crazy on social media. And this is the kicker right here. This is the kicker. This one really disturbed me. Girl, what race ain't better than niggas? Mexicans, Asians, all that. So she's talking about Mexicans and Asians and everybody's better than niggas. So, so listen to me, family. Listen, man. Now you see why they got her. When you see these mammies and bedwenches saying all this vile shit about black folks on Twitter and social media, they, I'm just joking. I'm just playing. No, no, no. They're sending out signals to white people. You better believe her white handlers saw all this and they knew, oh, that's, that's somebody that we can use. And this, this is supposed to be this big old professional doctor. This woman sounds crazy on the, the internet. And that's why they made her get rid of all that stuff. Kismikia Corbet. Corbett or Corbet, either one. So family, this is the person who they wanna, wanna want you to get vaccines from. So they know that a person with that mentality, if black people are harmed by the vaccines that she's helping to push, they know she ain't gonna trip. They know she ain't going to have no fucked up conscience about it and then just come clean. No, they already, they've already vetted her and saw that she's a, a, a self-hating mammy, a, a, a goddamn bed wench. So they already know she's on the team. So they're going to use her to their advantage. You understand? Now, some people say she, she's Nigerian. She said that her family is some seven generations here. A lot of people think that she's like one of these undercover immigrants. You did because she don't she she has a look. She don't look like a foundational Black American, and the shit she's talking don't sound like a foundational Black American. You think? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Let me let me put up some. And she when when she got caught out there, oh my gosh, she started lying. And this is the for for them to make believe that this woman is some kind of brilliant scientist. She's not a very good liar. She's not a very good liar at all. Hold on one second, because then she tried to do some nigga explaining, and you know she's sounding ridiculous. Let me let me go to something, and she's trying to lie her way out of it and troll her way out of it. Hold on. Um, where is it? Where's her tweet? Okay, and people are calling her out, and this is one. She's like. The tweets you found are like from 2003. I, I'm not damn. I was not damn near 30. Please stop insulting my education. Insult me all you want, but my degrees and my street smarts are what they are earned. And she said she tweeted it in 2003. Family, Twitter wasn't around in 2003. There was no Twitter in 2003, guys. So this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a dishonest. Self-hating, black community hating, mammy bedwench. We're dealing with a hardcore mammy bedwench here. And she's trying to troll her way around the comments, but she's not really witty enough. And you know, she kind of tried to play the, y'all just don't want to see a black girl shine. She kind of tried to play the Kamala Harris thing. The same thing Kamala Harris did. When we start calling Kamala's bullshit out, what did they do? Oh, y'all y'all just hating on the black girl magic. Y'all just don't want to see the black woman shine. They want to try to play that bullshit game. Yes, this fool tried to say her tweets were from 2003. Twitter wasn't around until 2008, by the way, guys. Yeah, say MySpace wasn't even around in 2003. <sighs> Family, these people know who to get to act as their Trojan horse. They know who to get. In Tuskegee, they got a Mammy. They got Eunice Rivers. They know to get Mammies, immigrants, bedwenches, 
When they wanted to get Michael Jackson, what did they do? Come here, Mr. Conrad Murray. They got an immigrant, an immigrant coon, to be the fall guy. They do it every time. They had Conrad Murray, that immigrant coon, to be the fall guy to off Michael Jackson. He got a slap on the wrist. Now he's back practicing medicine back in the Caribbean. He's back practicing medicine, got his slap on the wrist, probably had a lot of money in his bank account when he got back for doing the dirty work of the white supremacists. And now when they want to push these vaccines and target us with these vaccines, they're trying to credential this little mammy bed wench. But see, we caught her out the gate early. See, we got to start catching them out the gate early. We got to catch them early. That's the problem. We got to catch them. You see, when these people ain't got no real stock in black society, we don't know them. The, the streets don't know them. We don't know them on a grassroots level. We don't know these folks. And the fact that we don't know these folks or know anything about them, that's suspicious. And then when they prop them up, these niggas come out of nowhere and they just been propped up. Red flag, red flag. You understand? So I knew something was up with her. I'm like, wait a minute. They're giving her way too many props and I'm I'm, I'm smelling biscuits. You can look at her pictures. I'm, I'm, I can smell the damn biscuits. Boy, the biscuit smell is heavy. Yeah, see, that's how we shut down Kamala. We knew the game. They were trying to do the same thing with Kamala. When they run around all of a sudden, when they get some, some dark person, Hey, look, y'all, black girl magic. Hey, look at this black woman. This the first black woman going to be doing it. The first black, black woman, black, black, black. With, they're doing that with Kamala Harris. And I'm like, wait a minute. Five years ago, she was Indian American. So now she blackity black, black. And we got to hop on her tit strap because she's black. And you claiming she's black. And this woman, when we look at her background, ain't nothing black about her. As a matter of fact, everything about this woman is anti-black. You did? So we got to start looking at stuff when, when somebody's trying to be extra, extra blackity black, black. When you're trying to do that, there's, there's something up to that. There's something going on with that. And speaking of somebody trying to be extra blackity black, black, ladies and gentlemen, speaking of somebody trying to be extra, extra, super duper blackity black, ladies and gentlemen, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. All I can, let, all, I can just pray. All I can do is pray. Jesus, walk away. Walk away. Not Jesus, but Satan, walk away. Walk, walk away, Satan. Why, this nigga, Roland is tr so desperately trying to get his grassroots credentials. Lord, Petty gods, why do y'all lure me back in with this nigga? Why, petty gods, why do y'all want me to roast this man so bad when I try not to? I try my best every day, and then this nigga posts shit like this, and you just, every time I get out, you pull me right back in. Every time I try to get out the game, they pull me back in. Jesus, why does this motherfucker look like a big-ass Benny Hanna chef? Lord, no wonder people can't get their sushi rolls in time. This nigga's cooking the food and taste testing the shit. This nigga looks like a big fucking <laughs> Benny Hanna chef. Lord, what does this nigga have on looking like a big moist Pillsbury doughboy? What the fuck does this nigga have on, Jesus? Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Why does this nigga look like Kung Fu Panda? Lord, petty gods don't do this to me. God. God. Why does this nigga look like a Lane Bryant model for the Corona gear? <laughs> you know, Lane Bryant is having a coronavirus outfit sale and this nigga's the model. God damn. Like a big fucking COVID-19 model. <laughs> Help me, Lord Jesus. God. Why, Lord Jesus? Why? Okay. So he, Roland is really trying to blacken it up so bad with these. 
three and five X dashikis in that big ass fucking head. Lord, how much cloth did it take to make this nigga's big fucking kufi? Nigga, that's a laundry basket on top of this nigga's head. He's using a laundry basket as a kufi. How much cloth did that take for that big fucking head? <laughs> Lord Jesus, I tried not to be petty. It's just, they just want me to be petty with this nigga. <laughs> Yes, he looks like a Lane Bryant COVID model. <laughs> Looking like Chef Moist RD, not Chef Boy RD. Chef Moist RD. That's what he looked like. Chef Moist RD. Damn. Oh, goodness. Man, man, man. This nigga looks like a Muslim who eats pork. Don't he? <laughs> this is like a Muslim who had a pork relapse. I can't stop it. It keeps calling me. Man. Good Lord. Why, Jesus? <laughs> Man. Instead of assalamu alaikum, he says, I got salami and ate it. <laughs> Not assalamu alaikum, I got salami and ate it. Dear God, I got salami and ate it. <laughs> you mean assalamu alaikum? Yes, I got salami and ate it. <laughs> no, it's not I got salami and ate it, it's assalamu alaikum. Oh, y'all just going to make me petty tonight. Oh, goodness. Man, man, man. Oh, so what else is happening out here, man? Everybody hit that thumbs up button. <laughs> so... <laughs> Not assalamu alaikum. Hot pocket salami bacon. <laughs> What'd you say? No. Hot pocket salami bacon. No, assalamu alaikum. Hot pocket salami bacon. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> first, okay, first of all. And at first, let me thank everybody for getting the Mink Slide album. First of all, let me thank y'all for that. Shout out to everybody who got the Mink Slide album, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to you all who have the Mink Slide album. Um, the Mink Slide, and we're doing very good right now. Billboard, the new Billboard comes out Tuesday. I can't wait to see how we're going to be doing on Billboard. I can't wait to see how we're doing on billboard um on some of the other charts like um google play this is google play we're still number two the weekend is whooping our ass so if you go to google play we're number two here's crush velvet we're beating all the other r b groups and albums everybody besides the weekend the weekend is he's killing that number one spot majorly yeah, man, our album is doing very, very well. I just wish it would, it, number one just would have been so sweet. The number one spot would have been very sweet. You know, hopefully we, I, I want to see what we're going to do on Billboard. But man, the, people are really loving the album. The album is the number two best-selling R&B album in the world right now on Google Play and so other platforms. If you go to Amazon, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is the Amazon, let me see, let me scroll up. We're in soul music, as you see, we're the number one soul album, all right? We're number one on Amazon is, is soul music. On R&B, let's look at the R&B charts. The soul charts were number one. The R&B charts, let's go there. The top selling R&B 
Um, let me see. Where's the okay? Best selling albums. Where's, where am I? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? We were here somewhere. Let me see. They must have changed, updated hourly. So where are we? Where are we? They got us up in here. Where the hell are we? So I don't know where we are on there, but we're number one soul on um on Amazon. We're number one soul on Amazon. So uh, so everybody go, you gotta go to iTunes, go to Google Play. Go to iTunes, go to Google Play. We're doing good on these charts so far, but still, everybody, go to iTunes and Google Play and, um, you know, get your album. Download the Crushed Velvet album. Purchase. It's only eight bucks. Everybody, it's only eight bucks, so y'all can, everybody got eight dollars. I know some of y'all got your little stimulus. <laughs> Just bought it on Google Play, Peachy Peach. You're going to get a blessing with your name on it. You understand? All my Google Play folks, get it on Google Play. You just downloaded it on Apple. My man Troy Wool Woolcock. That's a hell of a name, Woolcock. Troy, that's a hell of a name, Woolcock. What's up, Bree? You didn't get yours, Bree? You need to email me. I'll make sure. I'm going to make sure Fatima get it out tomorrow if you don't have it. Email me, dear. I'll make sure you got it. Yeah. Man, you just downloaded it on Apple. Shout out to Ricky Bobby. Shout out to, yeah, you, everybody get it tonight. Everybody go on Apple. If you got Apple, get it tonight, man, because we're trying to come in hot on Billboard this next week, the, the Billboard charts, man. We're trying to come in as high as possible, and we're, we're trying to send a message to the establishment that this we can really compete on an independent level. So we're already doing that. I want to get that number one spot away from the artist the weekend. I mean this dude he's you know this dude got a lot of big ass budget behind him. So we're we're on that brother's bumper with it. You dig? You just you pre-ordered it on Google Play Plus. Yeah, if you don't have it, get it tonight. Get it now. While I'm talking, go to Google Play. Yes. Go to Google Play and go to iTunes and type in Mink Slide Crush Velvet and just get it. It's, you can get it. It takes like two seconds to get it. And again, everybody loves the album. Everybody loves the album. Very fun album. And you guys are going to really enjoy it when you hear it, ladies and gentlemen. Now we gotta, you know, we gotta watch a lot of stuff that's being said about this Corona virus out here. We gotta watch a lot of stuff, family. We gotta watch a lot of stuff that's happening out here. Um, you know, they're, they're still trying to continue to put a black face on this thing. There was an NFL player, and I talked about this on my social media. It was a, a player named Brian Allen who got COVID. He was the first NFL player to get it. And Brian Allen is a white dude. But then the next day, it was a brother who got it. What's that brother's name? Bond something? What's that brother's name who got it, guys? What's that brother's name who got it? There's a brother who got it, but they put all the emphasis on that. Bond Miller, that's his name. Boy, they put all the emphasis on Bond Miller getting it. They put all the information and the, the emphasis on Bond Miller. And this is something that they did. So this is how desperate they are to put a face on it. They said, Brian, this is on Pro Football Talk. Brian Allen, first active NFL player, NFL player to test positive for COVID. Now, in the picture, that's not Brian Allen. They put the black player picture in the article about the white dude. You think? This is Brian Allen. You understand? This is Brian Allen. But in the article, they put Brian Allen's name, but they put a black face on there. Family, they're not doing this by accident. That's not an accident. That's not an accident, not a typo or nothing. That's not an accident at all. This is how desperate they are to keep a 
black face on COVID. Well, you don't put a white man out there for nothing. If you do mention a white man, well, you do it very casually and then bury it. So whenever they mention a white person, well, they bury it, they talk about it real quick and then move on very quickly. And then, so we got to watch that family. We got to be very weary of that. We got to watch that stuff. We got to watch it. But anyway, let me get up out of here. I wasn't going to do too long of a broadcast tonight. I just wanted to come in and chop up game with the family. Glad to have y'all tuning in, guys. Glad to have y'all tuning in. By the way, man, again, everybody right now, I need y'all to go to iTunes, go to Google Play, iTunes, Google Play right now, ladies and gentlemen, and get that Crushed Velvet album tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Get that Crushed Velvet album tonight. Enjoy it with your family. Very fun album iTunes, Google Play, and to make it more convenient, you can click the link right below. The link is right there below, so everybody can click that. All right, y'all be safe. I just have to share that information. So we, it's so much shit going on, man. I want us to be on top of it. That's why I had to go on quickly tonight. Whenever we see the bullshit happening, we need to start getting this media information because we have to, we are the media, guys. We're the new media. We gotta be the new media. We, we have to stay on top of all the bullshit. Whatever they tell you on TV, man, you got to take a lot of that shit with a grain of salt. You got to watch the information that these people are giving you because, see, they're giving us a lot of bullshit information. They're running a lot of game right now. The Bill Gates folks, we got to keep our eye on them. We got to keep our eyes on these boule Negroes they wheel out. We got to be 100% on top of these folks. You understand? We got to really be on top of these folks, man. And we got to be on top of this information. We really got to be on top of it. So when I see them throwing some folks out here that's going to be pretty detrimental to us, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me let y'all know what's going on with this motherfucker. All right, let me let y'all know. When y'all see this person's face, this ain't the one right here. This ain't the one. Yeah, this ain't the one right here. All right? All right, family, man. Y'all have a good night, man. Y'all be safe. Much love. Follow me on Instagram, Tariq Elite. Everybody follow me on Instagram if you're not following me on Instagram. Tariq Elite. Follow me on Instagram, man. I'm going to holler at y'all. 